Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? Time for another tutorial from VideoEditingSoftwareGuide.com. Today we're doing a tutorial on Sensor Blur in Pinnacle Studio Ultimate Collection HD. Let's get into it. This is not the hardest thing to do. It's pretty easy to do as a matter of fact. It's just that it takes a lot of time to get it right. So I'm going to show you how to get it done so you get it right and it looks good. First and foremost, you got to bring your video or picture, whatever you're doing, down into the timeline. Once you do, you want to get your scrubber where you want it. And you want to click, right click, and go to Classic Title Editor. Once you're here, you want to go ahead and click on the circle. And you want to move your cursor where you want the circle to be. Click left click and then make your circle the size that you want it. Place it where you want to on the video track. Then you want to go to color. Now you could do transparency, but if you do, it's not going to show anything. It's not going to be any good. So I use a color. So I go to face and then I pick my color that I want. I'm going to choose black. Click OK. Now, if you want to add some blur, you, you can leave it like this. It'll have no blur, and it'll just be a circle going wherever you want it. But I like to add blur in, so I'm going to move my blur up, and I'm going to move it all the way up to 30. Now, I have my element on my video where I want it, so I'm going to click OK. I'm going to stretch this title out to match the time the, of the Clip above it, and I'm going to right click on the title. I'm going to go to Open Effects Toolbox. Once I'm here, I'm going to go to Studio HD RTFX, and then I'm going to go to Picture in Picture. I'm going to click OK. First thing I need to do is go to the presets and change it to full screen, and it'll bring it back to where I started it off at. Move my scrubber back over to the beginning of the track. Now I'm in business. Click back on the track here or the title so that the picture picture comes back up. Now what I need to do is keyframe it out. So this is going to take some time because you have to keyframe this blur to follow the person, the car, whatever it is that you're um, doing across the screen. So I'm going to click on use keyframes and I'm going to move up one frame and make the adjustments that I need to make as I go. Now one of the things that you want to do too on this is right now I don't need to make any adjustments so I'm just going to keep clicking my frame and once I get somewhere where I think uh, I need to move it it's about here I'll go ahead and move the positions over where I want them. So I might do this one at a negative one for the horizontal to move it over to the left. You'll see it jump over to the left. If I need to move it down, I'll do negative one and it'll move it down. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go to the last keyframe by clicking move to next keyframe. 
And I'm going to drag the scrubber back a little bit to where the individual face is last on the screen. And that's pretty good right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and position my blur where the individual is. I can see his face is bigger too, so I want to move the size up some to about 130 for the width and the height. Matter of fact, let's make it bigger than that. Let's make it 150. Make that sucker huge. And then I'm going to go ahead and position the blur right over where the guy is going to be at. Now, the reason why I'm doing this part is because I want the first keyframe to match up with the last keyframe that I'm doing. So that as I move through the keyframes, it's going to try to reach that last keyframe. So each time I get closer to it, it's going to be the two keyframes are going to be getting closer together. So it just makes it a little bit easier to move from the first keyframe to the last one because I already know where the last position is going to be. So I'm going to go back to the last keyframe I was at. And I'm just going to keep stepping through frame by frame and adjusting the size and the position of the blur to match where the individual is at. Now I'm not going to go through each keyframe and show you how to do this because it's just keyframing over and over and over again. So it's pretty easy to do. That's about it on this one. You're done. It's a wrap. Eh, nothing else to see on this. So let's do another one. I'm going to go to this next thing here. I got a little picture on here, but I want to blur out the words on this picture. Now there's two different ways you can go about doing that. The first way is just using the regular blur. Right click on this and go to Open Effects Editor or Open Effects Toolbox. I'm going to go to Studio Ultimate RTFX and go to Blur and hit OK. Now I'm going to move my blur up to about 30 for the horizontal and the vertical. And then I can change the position of the blur and just make a little box. All you can really do with this one is make a little box out of it. So you can use this one on people too if you want them to have blockheads, but if you don't want them to have blockheads, I think you should use the circle of the text editor. Looks a lot better. So you move your left, your right, move your top down where you want it to be. And then you move your bottom up where you want it to be. Now some of you may be like, yeah, that's okay. I mean, you blurred out the words, but now you see a box around and stuff. That doesn't look too good for this picture anyway. If you're using like a license plate or something else that was stationary, it would look fine. But for this, eh, don't like it too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trash this. Trash it. Trash it. I don't want it on there. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to actually go ahead and right click where the scrubber is again. And I'm going to go ahead and go to classic title editor again. Now this time, I'm going to choose the square. And I'm going to bring the square up here where I think I want it to be. And that's pretty good. Now on this one, I'm going to choose a different color. So I'm going to click on change face color and it's really right where I want it to be anyway because this was the last color I used. I'm going to use a uh, grayish white for this one. I'm going to click OK. And my blur is already up on 30. If I didn't have my blur up here, it would just look like a box like that. So I got to move my blur up. It could look kind of nice. And on this one, you know, it takes out that squarey feel, look and feel to it. So it looks more like a blur. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to stretch out my title. Now I'm going to right click on the title. 
I'm going to go to Open Effects Toolbox. And on this one, I'm not going to use Picture in Picture because I want to get some rotation going on it because, like you said, like we saw when I just used the blur, it's just a box straight over it. But I want it to rotate a little bit. So I'm going to go to Studio Ultimate RTFX and I'm going to go to 2D Editor Advanced. Click OK. I'm going to change the positions to zero so that they're right in the middle of the screen. And my horizontal to 100 and my vertical to 100. And it's got a little bit of rotation on this bad boy, so I'm going to change that to zero. Now you see it looks like the box that it looked like before. All right. So now it looks like the box that I looked like before. I need to get it into the correct position. I want to turn it. I want it to be on this bad boy. So my horizontal right now, I'm going to move that around and play with it to get it over where I think it should be. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave it at zero for now. The vertical, I'm going to leave where it is for now. And then we're going to go to the rotation. Rotation is the first thing I want to change because I want to see how it fits on top of it when I turn it. So I'm going to rotate it to about 23. And... That looks okay right now. Got a little bit of the blur coming down here from the softness and the top. I got not enough. So I need to change my position first. I want to move it horizontally. I mean vertically because I want it to move up this way. So let's go ahead and try. It's a little bit too high. And I can tell too that my little rotation is a little bit off because I can see it right there. So while it's there, I'm going to try to play with the rotation a little bit. Get it better. That's a lot better. There you go. I like that. So my vertical was too high, so I'm gonna move that back down. Let's try uh, five. A little bit too low. Let's try eight. It's looking better. Let's try nine. It's even better. And maybe even ten. Try one more for good luck. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to leave the horizontal. And you know what? I'm going to move the horizontal up a little bit. Matter of fact, let's leave it where it is. What I am going to do is change the size horizontally. Change that to, let's see, 110. I'm going to try to cover up this S and this L here. Okay, I like that. And rotation is looking a little off again, so let's try to straighten that bad boy out. That's better. All right, and let's go ahead and move it horizontally over a little bit because the L's covered good, but the S isn't covered as well. I like stats. And let's get the vertical size down a little bit. Damn near perfect. I like that. So now that we're all set, we go ahead and close this out. And now we've sensor blurred out the words on the pad. So, there's a few different ways to do it. You can use the regular blur effect, or you can use the classic title editor and go ahead and throw on a circle or a square or a different shape. If you want to go ahead and choose another shape, there are the ability to change other shapes are in there. And you can go ahead and change the blur on those to make your sensor blur how you want it, where you want it, and when you want it. That's it. How to make a sensor blur. The Pinnacle Studio Ultimate Collection HD. A few parting words from your video editing friend. Do me a favor, okay? You know what to do. Leave your comments. Leave your comments here. I love to get your comments. 
I respond to them. I get back to you. If I don't have the answer, I'll point you in the right direction to get the answer. All right? Like the video. You're watching it. You might as well like it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You know what? I like the thummy that points up, but if you're going to click the one that points down, go ahead. Like it, hate it, love it, live it, do what you got to do. Don't forget to share the video. Share it. Share it on Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter, whatever. Share it. If you like it and it's helping you out, share it so other people can get some uh, help too. They may not know where to find this site. They may not know where to find these videos. But if you think they're useful, share them with people so that they can go ahead and learn a few things too. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.